Principles of Bone Marrow and Peripheral Blood Stem Cell Transplantation Principle NB Malignant cells can be destroyed by chemotherapy or radiotherapy if the doses are high enough. However, the doses required to eradicate disease can be so toxic that irreversible vital organ damage would occur, thus killing both the tumor and the patient. The principal dose-limiting side effect of conventional chemotherapy and radiotherapy is bone marrow toxicity. In many malignant diseases the higher the dose of treatment given, the greater the chance of cure. Infusing stem cells that will reconstitute the bone marrow enables doses of chemotherapy and radiotherapy to be given that would otherwise cause fatal irreversible bone marrow failure. Autologous transplantation refers to material reinfused into the same individual it was taken from. Allogeneic transplantation refers to material infused from a different individual. Over time it has been noted that patients transplanted from allogeneic donors have less disease relapse than those receiving autologous transplants. This and other evidence has led to the demonstration of a graft, donor, versus leukemia slash malignancy, patient, or GVL effect as one of the main mechanisms for preventing disease relapse after transplantation. Knowledge of this mechanism has enabled transplanters to develop a different approach to transplantation, known as non-myeloablative or reduced-intensity conditioned transplants. This uses less toxic treatment prior to the transplant, relying on the immunity of the donor to suppress any residual malignant cells. As this is less toxic, these transplants can be performed in much older patients, up to 70 years old in some circumstances and in those who have organ dysfunction before transplantation. Practical Details Before Treatment Hematopoietic stem cells must be collected before the transplant. If this is from the patient, autologous, the stem cells are usually stored frozen until they are needed. Stem cells from an allogeneic donor are usually, but not always, used fresh. Allogeneic donors may be human leukocyte antigen, HLA, matched siblings, HLA matched unrelated individuals or family members, haploidentical. HLA matched cord blood may also be used. In bone marrow transplant, BMT, the source of the stem cells is the marrow, whereas in peripheral blood stem cell transplant, PBSCT, the source is blood. Currently nearly all autologous, and about 50% of allogeneic, collections use peripheral blood stem cells. Stem cells in the peripheral blood can be collected following stimulation with growth factors, granulocyte colony stimulating factor, or chemotherapy, in patients. The cells are then harvested on a leukopheresis machine. Marrow donations are performed under general anesthesia during which approximately 1 L of marrow is removed from the posterior pelvis. The patient receives conditioning chemotherapy and slash or radiotherapy and slash or immunotherapy to reduce any residual disease, and prepare the bone marrow environment to receive the transplanted cells. The transplant itself. The marrow or leukopheresis collection is infused into the patient through a Hickman line just like a blood transfusion. The transplanted stem cells travel to the bone marrow space where they engraft and proliferate to produce a full complement of mature blood cells over the next few weeks. The immunosuppression and myelosuppression requires the patient to be isolated in a transplant room and looked after by trained transplant staff. Immunosuppression to prevent reactions between the graft and host, and prophylactic antibiotics are used routinely. Once neutrophils and platelets begin to appear in the circulation, isolation restrictions are relaxed and the patient is allowed home after a matter of weeks. Indications Leukemia Allogeneic transplantation can cure acute and chronic leukemia in up to 60% of suitable patients. 
The indications for transplantation in this setting are usually very straightforward and agreed upon by societies such as European Blood and Marrow Transplantation, EBMT. Many of the current clinical leukemia trials include criteria for transplantation, or randomization to receive a transplant. Autologous BMT in acute leukemia may prolong survival compared with chemotherapy alone, but there is substantial extra hospitalization and morbidity. Lymphoma and other malignancies A lymphoma that relapses after conventional chemotherapy is still potentially curable with high-dose chemotherapy and autologous transplantation. Lymphomas are more common in older patients and the advent of reduced intensity conditioning has now increased the application of allogeneic transplants in these patients, with very satisfactory outcomes. High-dose chemotherapy and autologous transplantation is also used to prolong survival in myeloma, but it is not curative. Many protocols currently include an autologous transplant as part of the first-line management in these patients. Trials of high-dose chemotherapy and autologous transplantation are underway in the treatment of other solid tumors such as teratoma and breast cancer. Non-malignant disease allogeneic transplant has also been used in the management of beta-thalassemia major and sickle cell disease. Complications Complications following transplants can generally be divided into toxicity, infection, and immunological. All complications become more common after allogeneic transplant, especially when using an unrelated donor, i.e. as the genetic disparity increases. Toxicity more commonly occurs early, related to the conditioning, but infections can occur at any time due to the patient's altered immunity. Acute graft vs host disease, GVHD, occurs in the first 100 days after allogeneic BMT. After 100 days it is termed chronic GVHD. GVHD and GVL both occur because the donor's immune system recognizes the patient's cells as being not self. Immunosuppression is used in the prophylaxis and treatment of GVHD. Any organ system may be affected, but the most common are the liver, skin, and gut. Outcome Transplantation offers the possibility of cure to a significant proportion of patients who would otherwise succumb to their disease. However, the risks of the transplant may be correspondingly high. The risk-benefit of the procedure must be assessed on an individual basis, taking into account the patient's age and general health as well as the disease prognosis with and without transplant. There is a 10-50% transplant-related mortality with allogeneic BMT. Death usually occurs secondary to infection or GVHD. Autologous BMT is associated with less than 5% mortality. The procedure must be explained in detail to the patient, and relatives, and careful notes of the discussion should be kept. The patient must give fully informed consent if transplantation is to proceed. NB BMT and PBSCT have become much safer over the years, due partly to better supportive care, but are still associated with risk. It is vital that the patient is central to the decision-making process if these treatments are being considered. It is the hematologist's responsibility to educate and inform patients honestly as to the risks, benefits and potential outcomes of all the therapeutic options, guiding them in deciding between transplant, standard chemotherapy or even no treatment at all.